Hello there everybody, this is Jorge Varela for the ButtonSmasher.com and here's our review of Operation Abyss New Tokyo Legacy. Okay, hopefully none of you guys hate me too much for this, but here I go. The short version of the review goes like this. I really tried my best to like this game since it seemed right up my alley, but I just didn't. It's probably one of the blandest and most generic RPGs I've played in a while. Nothing I see in it is interesting, and the plot is boring as hell. The UI is awful, and the gameplay feels cheap and antiquated. Even for hardcore RPG fans, I would recommend other games that do the same thing better. And now, the long version of the review goes like this. Every single time I saw Operation Abyss New Tokyo Legacy through screenshots, it looked like the coolest game in the world. However, every time I saw it on video, it felt like a super rough RPG that was held back by old ideas. Unfortunately, the latter is what I ended up being reassured of, with the coolness I perceived from it very quickly vanishing. This is mostly due to large amounts of small annoyances that accumulated over time to something I didn't want to involve myself with anymore. Operation Abyss is a first-person dungeon-crawling RPG that takes place in a modern-day setting. In this setting, we find an incredibly generic story about a silent, amnesiac protagonist, stop me if you heard this one before, and this person of course gets roped into a secret high school organization of monster hunters who claim that he or she is important than what it initially seems. None of it really matters though, not even who you are, what your name is, or what your purpose is, since the game kind of gives you a bunch of preset characters with no story behind them. It's not like in other RPGs where you slowly start to gain a party that consists of characters. But no, it's like, do you want to create your own dudes or do you want a preset, you know, set of characters? Yes or no? If you say yes, there we go. Your screen immediately gets filled in with a bunch of random faces that have no backstory or nothing. They're just there to kind of, you know, be more... A a attacks for when you fight or something. None of it really matters since the game gives you a bunch of preset characters with no story behind them, who are then are talked to as a single entity. Who you are doesn't really matter because you can create your own teammates and still not make any difference in the boring and uninteresting story. There are a couple of generic looking characters with forgettable art direction that show up in the beginning hinting at some sort of story, but all of them are so bland that you forget about them almost immediately after they leave the screen. It doesn't help that both the Japanese and the English voices alike sound like bored people that are trying their best not to fall asleep in the middle of a recording. Everyone sounds so monotone that I lost interest in listening to anything the characters had to say. Whenever you're not going through dialogue scenes, you're preparing for some dungeon crawling, which can be a much bigger chore than it sounds. This is mostly due to the horrendous UI and how this game loves to overcomplicate simple things. Instead of naming things in a simple way, they would much rather reskin it in unnecessary jargon and confusing ways to find everything, mostly for the sake of having it sound cooler or more complex than it actually is. Instead of just having an option like EXP boost or changing your class, class change or something like that, you instead hear terms like growth surgery or personality therapy or some stupid thing like that. Every time you go back to one of the many confusing facilities with even more confusing menus, you have to read the names and try to remember what all of these labels mean. No matter what, you will always be cluttered with too much stuff on the goddamn screen with weird names and no easy explanation as to what any of it does, making the whole experience frustrating. It could be so much easier, but no, like every single item or piece of equipment has to be like the PIG life giver or something like that. It can't just be like a potion or a healing or something like that. It's always gotta be like this weird jargon that it can't get. Speaking of frustration, the dungeon crawling is not fun at all either. From the beginning, you are met with random encounters with still images of crappy looking monsters that you need to fight. The battle menus look incredibly cheap and are presented in a way that's always difficult to tell what you're actually selecting. Since this game is very much rooted on the old style of RPGs, then it relies on concepts like not being able to select individual enemies, you gotta go for entire groups, having to use a strange assortment of points for magical spells, or not being able to level up until you return to a medical facility, rather than just having to be done automatically in real time. The fight in itself is also not stimulating or flashy enough to catch your attention. Most of it simply looks like a rough RPG Maker game with pre-made visuals and sound effects. The pacing of the battles and access of the text describing every single tiny little thing in the battle makes every fight a complete slog to go through. Like even Dragon Quest will look at the text and be like, whoa dude, come on, just get on with it. Early on, you'll probably spend most of your time fast forwarding through the fights, since you won't be able to do much outside of regular attacks anyway. In a world where Persona 5 exists, this game just feels like something that might have been decent 15 years ago. You can have 6 characters to fight at a time and use a variety of different classes to serve different needs. Here's where I find more issues where I'm too overwhelmed with choices that I don't know what to go for or what anything does, and I'm confused as to what any of these things actually are. You know, like, is this a class? Is this a personality? How does this affect my, my character? Stuff like that. You can choose a personality, a sex, and an age, but those are never reflected on your character in any meaningful way. After that, you can choose a blood code, which is like a spirit guardian that gives you specific abilities and stuff like that. Then you can assign stats that change a bunch of other stats that clutter up more of the screen. 
There's just numbers everywhere that won't matter much to you unless you're a hardcore fan that already knows what those words mean. When you get all of that out of the way, you can traverse the dungeons, which is filled with irritating traps, way too much backtracking, and infuriating limitations to bring your progress to a complete stop. One example was one time where I came across a locked door and the game pointed out that I needed an academic to hack the door and unlock it, which wasn't guaranteed to work anyway. I had no idea what an academic was or how I were to get one, so the game told me that I needed to walk all the way back to my base, and get an academic in my team somehow, I've still yet to figure that out, and just luck my way into opening the door. It wasn't until much later that I discovered that I could just grab anyone on my team and keep attempting to unlock the door until, I'd, until it eventually just opened. The whole process is just unpleasant, it's not fun, and it's such an annoying chore to go through. I think doing actual real life chores are much more fun than playing this. Overall, I really don't like this game at all, which is sad because I went into this fully convinced that I was going to love it. The screenshots look so cool, but everything else is so terribly boring, unnecessarily complicated, and uninspired. I get angry when I think about this game because it could easily be great, but instead it relies on incredibly old formulas and fake ways to make things sound cooler than they actually are. If the game actually bothered to get its head out of its ass, simplified everything, and made characters we care about, maybe they'd have a chance. I recommend whoever made this look at stuff like Etrian Odyssey, Persona Q, or even Legend of Grimrock. Take some hardcore notes about why people love those games so much, then look back at Operation Abyss, New Tokyo Legacy, and see how it compares.